when you have livestock, of course, there's going to be odor, and and uh, the nearer you live to one of those, the you know the more problems you're going to have with it. Today we have a lot of things that we can do to control odor, but it does need consideration because odor is basically offensive to people. The perception is that if a, if a livestock operation comes into their community, they're going to smell that operation 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. That's not the reality of it. When we did ours, we're, we're about three miles away from town. And the first comment that came out was, how's that going to affect our new sports complex we put in? You know, are we, are they going to, is they going to stink it up and nobody's going to want to come to our games and stuff? The biggest reason for the NIMBY syndrome, not in my backyard, is the odor. They're so nervous that you're going to affect their way of life that unless they can have concrete evidence that it doesn't affect them, they're scared. There are people with non-farm uses and they want protection from odor, but agriculture is has such a huge impact on the local economies that that also needs protected. Our population is steadily declining and without a healthy livestock industry, it, it will decline more rapidly and than it has been. Local zoning pretty much controls whether a person will build or not in respect to odor issues. I, I actually went with and met with all of my neighbors ahead of time um, before I even applied for the permit. Here in, here in Nebraska, it's very important that you're visiting with your neighbors to let them know what it is you want to do, why it's important to you to do it, and what you're going to do to help alleviate any of the concerns that they may have. Some people, you know, odor does affect worse than others, and uh, so it, it, uh, it, it's hard to judge, you know, how big of a problem it is. I guess I felt like I kind of really bent over to compensate him and to let him know what I was trying to do. I was trying to be a good neighbor to begin with, which is kind of why we were so floored that we had so much opposition. Will there be some odor? Yes, and I never tell somebody that uh, they're never gonna smell odor from a livestock operation, because that's just not true. But it's not gonna be that 365 days out of the year, 24 hours a day, like they're often led to believe. You know, we have our regulations in place and they are asked to follow that, but if I do receive a complaint, but they are following the regulations, I still call that producer and warn them that there are neighbors that are not happy and try to encourage them to change their practice or whatever it takes to try to keep the neighbors happy too. Uh, a big thing that kept coming up in the conversations was uh, location. You know, why don't you move it someplace else? Properly siting a livestock operation can make or break the, the uh, possibility of that livestock operation to be able to go in. We established some new zoning regulations this, two years ago for our county, and we used the odor footprint and established certain uh, footage as far as setbacks from livestock operations. The odor footprint tool is mainly a planning aid for producers wanting to expand existing livestock facilities or to build new ones. This tool allows producers to determine possible problems with potential sites, while also providing an evaluation of the benefits or limitations of various odor control options. By implementing the odor footprint tool early in the planning process, producers can also demonstrate their consideration for the well-being of neighbors. As a result, the producer's chances of receiving a permit to build or expand a facility can be improved and there may be a greater likelihood for a more peaceful coexistence with other people in the community. The University of Nebraska has developed an odor footprint for livestock facilities and, and we recently looked at, at implementing that along with an application for a livestock uh, facility for their permitting process. We can go in and actually predict what the odor footprint will look like from a swine operation based upon the size of that operation. The odor footprint tool uses area in order to figure up what that, uh, to predict what that odor will look like. And that's been a, a really big tool in helping us to be able to properly locate livestock operations. I like this information because it's, it's based on science as much as it can be. 
It's not as subjective as, as just people's opinion. It's based upon what the prevailing winds are around the area and the time of the year. Uh, all those things are factored into the formula that's, that's used to figure this up. And what we can do then is lay that on an aerial photograph and show the neighbors that are going to be around that livestock operation what that plume will look like and show them that uh, if it's located properly, that their house, that where they live, will not be in that odor footprint. And most of the time we figure it up at a 96% odor annoyance free, which means that at that line where you're actually physically seeing this footprint, that 96% of the time you will not smell an odor of the annoying level. Um, as we look at livestock permits, we do not at the current time have regulations that say that they have to submit an odor management plan. But, you know, I try to encourage the producers all the time to bring out anything that they're trying to implement, any kind of technology, um, whether it's windbreaks or anything to help with odor. Uh, we've installed uh, biofilters in one of our operations, one of our uh, facilities to help control odors. Uh, it's, it's close to where I live, it's close to some neighbors, so we want to take the extra steps to control that odor. Now, biofilter is used to control odor and other air emissions uh, from livestock facilities. It's one of the more proven and uh, cost-effective methods, uh, making it practical on farms. We're using a, a horizontal biofilter where we treat the odor coming out of the building, especially in the cool times of the year. So as air comes out of fans, like this pit fan right here, and, or one of the wall fans that would run most of the year, that air comes out and it has uh, odor and other um, particulate matter in it and it comes through and is directed below the biofilter. As it comes up through the wood chips there are microorganisms inside the biofilter bed that consume the odorous compounds and basically it comes out about 80 to 90 percent uh, free of odorous compounds. We're watching what it's in our diet in our feed right now and we're also uh, we're planning on putting shelter belt around our area. Or we're putting some things in our feed to treat the feed, uh, things in the, in the pits. Also using some th synthetic amino acids to reduce the amount of nitrogen, which in to reduce the odor. We're going more to a deep pit system where the manure is, is uh, stored in a more concentrated area. And when we apply it, we're injecting it into the soil to reduce odor uh, being spread into the atmosphere. I think it should be voluntary for producers to use new technology, but encouraged um, because there, there are a number of people that just aren't comfortable with change. They want to see that it's proven before they adapt it. I'm not going to tell you that raising animals it doesn't smell because it does, but we can greatly reduce it with the technologies that we've come up with. important for us as modern pork producers to control odors and reduce odors as much as we can. We haven't had a complaint, we haven't been reported or had any kind of any conflict so far. Um, actually our neighbors are starting to wave at us and stuff again so that's kind of <laughs> nice. And probably the most successful way is educating people you know that yes some of these risks such as odor do happen out in the country, but that the livestock producer is really working to try to minimize those. You know, most of them, you know, the operations are, are trying to do the best they can to control it. And I think, I think they've learned as they've gone. You know, they've, they've tried to deal with neighbors when they've had a problem. With the tools we have, we can determine what kind of effect we could carry to them and, and how we can go forward and be better stewards of our operation. We need animal agriculture to feed the world and let's do it in the best possible way we can.